A new card has appeared to be spoiled for the KO Armory deck that exists for Flesh and Blood, soon to be released in the next coming months. And the card is very, very good. But is it good enough to cause the entirety of the Flesh and Blood community to lose their mind? The answer might surprise you. Welcome on In Dragonfolk. It is always a pleasure to see your beautiful faces here today. It is not a video about Clash today, believe it or not. What today's video is, is about a new piece of equipment that is coming out in the KO Armory deck. Something I actually have not covered yet here on the channel is the Armory decks. Now, we all know that Blitz decks exist, right? We've seen Blitz decks. We've seen them, you know, be a fan favorite to people who might just be getting into the game. It is flesh and blood's kind of way to get people in to play. You know, you can just grab two decks for like 10 bucks a piece, slam them down at home and just play with your friends. And it's super efficient. I think even most recently with the heavy hitter set, the blitz decks got even more and more valuable with the fact that there are extended art promos in the actual Blitz decks. Uh, you can't get these extended art promos for these cards inside the main set. The only place you can get them is in the actual Blitz decks, along with rainbow foil versions of the young heroes. So what is an armory deck then? Well, the armory deck that we're going over is for KO. Now the KO armory deck is soon to be released in May. I believe May 3rd is the date for release. These decks are not like Blitz decks. Blitz decks, it's 10 bucks. You're able to go ahead and play with your friends in Blitz. It's very low power level decks that end up, you know, you're able to upgrade them or use some of the cards in the decks into, uh, if you're gonna upgrade them class constructed, maybe you wanna keep them at the Blitz level for Clash. That's also another thing you can do. But something that is new with these armory decks is that they're specifically made for classic constructed. They are 60 card decks with equipment and everything you need essentially to play the hero. And with KO being a big prevalent force in the classic constructed format, I'm very curious to see what kind of stuff is gonna be coming out in this actual deck. And when you take a look at it, right, you do have it's, it's a really well done box design. I love how everything looks about it. Armory Decks, new series of ready to play decks supporting ease of access to classic constructed, the most popular flesh and blood format in the world. Armory Decks include new card designs in addition to many of the foundational cards used in tournament winning decks of the featured hero. An ideal way to pick up and play at weekly Armory events running at local game stores across the world. So what this is, is a way for, you know, normally if you're, especially out here in the States, we have a lot of places that do Classic Constructed as their Armory Night. It's either Classic Constructed or a draft if they can get a draft in, but in most cases it's Classic Constructed. The thing you can't do with a Blitz deck is you cannot actually get a, a play, you, you can't buy a Blitz deck and then use it in the format. It just doesn't work right you don't have enough cards and the decks are really really bad and not really meant for a 40 health format so it's great they're coming out with this they are coming out with new card designs though and they have actually spoiled a couple of these cards for this deck in the product sheet now this has caused a lot of discourse on twitter as well as several other places strictly because there are a lot of people who don't want to see powerful cards in these armory decks. Not that they don't think that new players deserve power, because it is important that new players are able to play on at least a somewhat level playing field with somebody with a maxed out version of that deck. You know, a, a fully fleshed out KO deck goes for like, you know, like nearly 800 to like $1,000 and this is a $40 beginner armory deck. So obviously we're not expecting it to be so insanely good that you're gonna win an armory, 
But what this does is it does give you the opportunity for if you're new to the game or maybe you're trying out a new hero, you can buy one of these and just enter the armory with it. Uh, you know, I even plan to do a little bit of a series where I want to try winning armories with just the base decks to see what their power levels are. But I'm sure I'm not the only one who's thinking that. But what they had done is they had actually released some images about some cards that come in this set now in this in this box. Sorry, it's forty dollars for the entire deck, but it also comes with this chess piece right here, Savage Sash. It is a temper two chess piece that at action speed, you can destroy it and have attack action cards with six or more power cost you one resource less to play this turn and then get go again. So this is a way for new players to have a powerful chess piece that isn't Find All Spring Tunic because you're still probably going to want to run Find All Spring Tunic. Now, is this card going to be nuts? Absolutely it is. I mean, you're able to make CNCs cost one. All of your Savage Swings and Savage Feasts cost nothing, but it's only for one turn. So its power level is not at the level in which most people would think, but if you're able to get a temper block and then save it until you're about to come in for the kill, it could very well be possible. But what you're losing in that realm is a dead chess piece that does nearly nothing for you until your opponent is under 10 life. And then it's very rough. Not to mention the fact that the chess piece also doesn't give your stuff go again. So you still need to find a way to give your cards go again at the end of the day. Are they gonna cost less? Yeah, but if you don't have go again, it's very rough. And I don't imagine that even though this is going to contain cards that are part of a you know, tournament winning deck list, I don't think this is going to include cards like Scabskin Leathers or Scowling Flesh Bag or any of those, like, or even Apex Bonebreaker. It's not gonna include any of those things. I assume this is gonna be the most important piece of armor that this deck sees and that's it is it going to be run over tunic that's to be decided but i don't think it is but there's a lot of drama regarding this because we come back to the idea of the classic battles stuff so uh, i have up here the classic battles reinar versus dorinthia decks that they came out with way back when it was essentially a way for you to grab two decks you and your opponent get to play them. They have cold foil versions of the heroes and uh, you know, super cool exclusive cards for these heroes in the actual decks that were not released in any other product. This was a problem, though, because Glistening Steelblade, a card that came in that box set, ended up becoming a staple in every single Dorinthia deck. The card is really, really good. And now the card itself is nearly the exact same price as the actual box of Classic Constructed. And you need three of them. In this case with Savage Slash, you only need one because it's an equipment. You're not going to need more than one. But there's fear that there's going to be scalping because we had seen previously at the Gamma uh, convention that this product, the KO Armory deck, is going to be tightly allocated to places, which means not a lot of places are going to be getting an absolute ton of these. What they wanted to do with this is allocate them properly based on attendance for events at LGSs. So if your LGS only ever has four people meet a week and that never, ever, ever, ever grows, then you're probably only going to get maybe one or two cases. I say cases because they come with 12, uh, but one or two displays of this KO deck for you to give out to players. And, you know, you can have them buy it, obviously, for like $40 MSRP and that helps get new players into the game at those small stores. But at bigger stores, if you know that a lot of people have been growing consistently day by day, they're getting, you know, one to three new players every other week or even that that's that's a pretty good statistic, even if it's at every other week. 
then these are probably going to be more allocated for those stores because that means that they're getting more and more people into the game. They have a plan to make more of these decks for different heroes. And I think that's really an important thing to remember is that KO is not going to be the only hero available at an armory deck you know, level. Something else that I'm not quite sure how well they're going to work with this is they did say this is going to be limited quantities. Now, we're not sure what limited quantities mean. It could mean limited quantities as in, you know, certain stores are only able to buy a certain amount of them at a time. Another thing is worrying about whether or not KO hits Living Legend. If they print to demand and then KO hits Living Legend, then there's no reason to sell this at your store anymore outside of having a deck for the Living Legend format because this deck no longer is legal in Classic Instructed. So the, the cards inside can be used anywhere. Obviously, Savage Sash is a brute chess piece, so Reinar can use it. Uh, if they come out with other brutes in the future, they can use that there too. And I really believe that we're, you know, we're in for a good time to see how well this deck actually plays out. But there's worry amongst the players that this is going to be scalped by people, that you know players are going to be just picking it up strictly for the chess piece and then flipping it online for like way more than its cost. And that's not good for new players. And that's correct. That is not good for new players, but I also don't believe it's happening. Most of the people who are in flesh and blood these days are not scalping. I haven't seen scalpers in flesh and blood I personally since I've started and I started back in Uprising. I haven't seen any kind of scalping occur to my knowledge. Speaking of scalping, I also wanted to bring up something that I would have imagined to be scalped, but isn't. And this is why I don't believe that this this armory deck is going to be scalped in any way, shape or form. The only thing that people are might they might get out of this is a foil CC hero version of KO as opposed to the Marvel version. They might give you a rainbow foil version of KO in the armory deck that is not confirmed, but I assume they're going to want to keep with that trend. But take a look at Round the Table. Round the Table is a set specifically for Ultimate Pit Fight. All four of these decks that come in here are supposed to go against one another in an Ultimate Pit Fight match, and everything in here is, you know, set for that. But what they did at the same time is they released incredibly powerful cards in the set with these Blitz decks. And these cards are worth quite a bit on their own, and as you can tell, for $45, you can get an Ira deck for $35, a Blitz deck for Bravant for $20, you get a nearly $20 Professor deck, and then even Melodies going for $15. So that's well over $45 in value, but nobody's buying them. Why is that? If scalping was already a very prevalent thing in Flesh and Blood, we would have seen this already. I mean, unless nobody knows about it, which is just mind blowing to me, but Round the Table is scalpable product in the terms of what it means to scalp and nobody's doing it. And that's good because that means that this product is getting into the hands of people who want it. You know, obviously $45 is well below map pricing, so it's not what it should be going for because you should be supporting your LGS and buying from there. But there are people like this is the online, the secondary market here that we're talking about. And if people were going to buy a let's say it's thirty five dollars at map for the Armory KO deck, people going to just be selling it online sealed or, you know, fifty seven. That's not that's not an effective strategy, especially when you can buy it at your LGS for less. So the situation here is that you can buy the round the table online for less than you can at your LGS, which again is not the way you should be buying it. But that is a way for you to get everything in here for like next to nothing. You get two bittering thorns at $10 a piece from the IRA deck. You get $20 civic steps from the Bravant deck. You get boulder, two boulder drop blues from the Bravant deck. There's also the mask, which I'm not seeing. There it is. 
This mask, which is a dollar, wildly enough, this mask is huge in most cases, so not a bad pickup. There's just so many of these that are great for decks that can be played even in Classic Constructed. But obviously we are not seeing the ramifications of something like that online currently at this very moment. Now, Brute is very popular, and because it's very popular, we might see a little bit more of a market swing into things. But unless this deck comes with the nuts, you're a, you're a, a, an armory player is still going to have to upgrade that deck. Is it going to be playable? Sure. It doesn't have a sideboard and it doesn't have, uh, you know, any I'm sure it doesn't come with any legendaries because if it came with legendary, if this deck comes with scab skin leathers, I don't know what the market's going to feel about it. Honestly, I don't care what the market feels about it. People can play KO at a fairly competitive level for scabs, but scabs isn't even like that great of a card. It's just battle worn two. And like sometimes you get to do more things if you don't roll bad anyway. That's the KO deck. That's the drama that we're dealing with. I think that this deck is going to be well appreciated on by players. Uh, you know, knowing that you can just pick up this deck and come to an armory night is really, really important. And I feel like it's going to help continue to grow communities around flesh and blood. And I also believe that even though a card in there is exclusive to this deck, that does not mean that they will not reprint it in future sets if for some reason the allocation is incredibly bad if allocation is so crazy tight on savage sash to the point where every brute is running it and every armory deck is being bought out left and right at every lgs so that they can flip it on the open market or because they need to get the sash for their ko deck i have a feeling that lss is going to look at those numbers and they're going to make changes accordingly this is not anything like a reserved list for Magic the Gathering. Flesh and Blood and the people over at LSS know what they're doing. And to see so many people claim that this is an affront to their TCG and it's not good for anybody at all, I feel like are not having enough faith in the company that, uh, that makes the game they love so much. I'm not saying that blind faith is good, you need to have a little bit of trust issues at some point, right? But you have to realize that we're not living at a point where cards are being printed at limited quantity and then having serial numbers slapped onto them like they are with the really special cards from Dust Till Dawn. Those cards are special and will not be reprinted. And those are fine to keep the way they are. Obviously, it doesn't really matter for the, like the format or whatever, but in the sense of Savage Sash, if they really needed to reprint it, they'll reprint it. And if it gets reprinted and all these scalpers then lose out on tons of money because they decided to try and scalp a card that was meant for a beginner deck for new players, then good, right? I hope I hope scalpers get rocked left and right because they don't deserve to be in this in the scene. But I just wanted to give my two cents on it. It was a lot of very back and forth stuff and drama and there's a lot of things going on. I we don't know enough. We don't know enough about any of this. We don't know about print runs. We don't know about any of the you know other cards that are even coming in the deck. Is it worth it? I think that Savage Sash is replaced by Find All Spring Tunic anyway, because then it's one free resource every three turns as opposed to one turn where you get to save like three resources maybe if that right so i don't know i'm not convinced that savage sash is the best thing to come to brute is it a temper two chess piece absolutely i'd make a temper two chess piece for uh for brute two and guess what they did it's it's raw meat it's raw meat they made a temper two chess piece already for this hero so if you're bothered about armor they've already got it it came as a common in the set. So anyway, I'm done ranting. I think this is just, I think the decks are gonna do really well. I don't think new players are going to be unable to purchase these. And I personally believe that LSS has our best intentions at heart. And I know that they will make sure that if something is a mistake and there is something that affects the market or the way players enter into their game and they're walled off by some means, then they will fix it 
and we will all be back on track. This is a learning development that, you know, the company's only like five years old. And with a company that's only five years old, we have to give them a little leeway. I'm sure there were people who were doing this exact same thing to Magic when Magic was five years old. And look at Magic now. It's 30 plus years old, and it's doing the weirdest things that I've ever seen in a TCG. Flesh and Blood is learning from their growth. They're continuing to grow their game in every way, shape, and form, and I'm here for it. So if you guys like this content, make sure to go ahead and like the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel as well for more you know, talking points. I like to have little discussions. I'll probably discuss with a lot of you in the comments down below about this. Um, but for $40, $35, I'm picking up one of these decks. I know my LGS will have them because, you know, a lot of people out here in Colorado, we are growing in the flesh and blood community every single day. So it's very cool to see armory decks coming into focus. And it's something that I think a lot of people have wanted for a long time. I'm just curious on a couple of points. And I'm going to have my faith in LSS that they are going to do the right thing and that this is going to be a healthy product for the community and not something that is going to provide its downfall. Again, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you'd pick up something like this as well to go to an armory night. And I, let me know what other armory decks you think they're going to come out with. Do you think they're just going to start with the heavy hitters heroes or do you think they're going to maybe move into... Uh, the part the mist veil stuff as part the mist veil comes out i'd be curious to hear you guys' thoughts but anyway thank you so much for watching i appreciate your support if you have not already you can always go ahead and become a channel member too that helps support the channel a whole bunch we already have our first channel member right here jonathan bauer so thank you jonathan bauer for being a member at the gold tier you are absolutely insane and i love you for it so if anybody is looking for a way to help out the channel, that is always appreciative, but it's not necessary. A subscribe will be perfectly fine. So thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate your support more than you will ever know and continue having fun in the flesh and blood. I will see you all in the next video. Nerd out.